welcome to the first tutorial in a series um, for the CryBlend add-on for Blender. Uh, I'm going to try to guide you through everything that it does. We're going to take it step by step and follow the uh, documentation here on the uh, Free Software Development Kit website. Um, by the time we're through, uh, we're going to touch on using other programs such as NG Plant. Uh, there's a program called NJob that will allow you to get normal maps, uh, ambient occlusion maps, and height maps from uh, your uh, photo stock. Uh, you can also do displacement maps with the GIMP with a little bit of time. Um, I put a lot of effort into this add-on. I've tried to make it as easy as possible. Uh, but it's not really intuitive. You actually got to follow the instructions to use it. Uh, there are certain ways that you have to do things to make it work. Um, uh, anyway, first things first, we've got just basic export. And the reason why I'm not going into uh, the install is because that will be in a PDF file that will be in the zip file. Uh, it will have some documentation included with the zip file that you download that will tell you how to install it, what you need to do uh, in order to get your resource compiler set up properly in it. Anyway, that aside, uh, let's see here. Go to Blender. Now I've got mine set up to where I've, I'm already set up for meters and my CryBlend add-on is already enabled by default. Um, when you get it, you're going to see a version 2.0.2-7. Uh, this add-on allows you to do darn near everything except for tank treads or anything skeletal. I'm not going to work on the skeletal animation export until the BMASH version of Blender is out as a stable release rather than a release candidate. I have started working on uh, porting it over to the BMS version, but I don't want to uh, get it done, have everything going fine, and then all of a sudden, oh, well, we had to change this because it wasn't working, or we decided to take that out, or, uh, well, it's Blender, you know, so we got to wait for the stable release. Um, I'd love to have this included with it, but not going to happen. Um, well, at least right now, not yet. Anyway, you followed the documentation that came with it, the PDF file, you got everything set up, uh, you're in meters, which uh, having it in meters, yes, that is about right. The default cube for Blender is about two meters in width in the uh, game engine. Now, I don't have it set up to where the bump maps or detail maps get exported when you do the materials. Over here you can see CGF, which is for static, CGA, which is for animated, uh, merge animations, that's going to be for taking all the animations in the scene and applying them to one animation clip. Be careful, that uses the first name of uh, the first animation. Uh, do not merge nodes, I got that enabled by default because really I haven't, uh, I've yet to export anything where I did want to merge the nodes. Uh, then we got real one, rather, run resource compiler, uh, which is something you'll do after you've uh, already exported it the first time and did the materials, and run resource compiler and do materials, which is what you'll do the first time. Okay, now let's get on to uh, doing our first export. First thing we'll do. Uh, is we'll go ahead and save this in our game folder of our CryEngine software development kit under objects and blender you can put it wherever you want to but this is where I'm putting it I'm gonna name this basic export now that we have it saved uh, when we go to do our export it'll automatically be in the right place 
Alright, now say our model's done. Uh, we've already UV mapped it, done what we're going to do. And, uh, oh, that's another thing. I'll go ahead and uh, leave that alone there. I've got this set up to where if you get excited and you export your model without assigning UVs because you just want to check it out in the game, see how the shadows are going to affect it and everything, well, it, it will automatically put a UV map here for you. Not a good idea, but it works. Okay, now our materials for our setup, uh, what we want to do is we want to have the first part of our material name to be the name of the model, just for sanity's sake. So, basic export is what we're going to call it, basic export. Don't forget your underscore, underscore, first slot, underscore, underscore, and whatever you want to name the material. Now, up here in the Cryblem menu, we have add material physics. Now, if you follow along with the documentation, you'll get a, uh, a gist of what's going on here. We'll get into this later. Uh, but right now, we're just going to add a phys default to the material, and that takes care of that. Now, we'll go ahead and add a cry export node, and we're going to name it basic export, just like our material, the first part of our material here. And when we do that, we can see it says adding cry export node basic export. Now, we have to do this in object mode. If we're in edit mode and we add that, it'll complain and it will not work. You just switch to object mode and it'll work. Okay, now, uh, with our textures, we'll just uh, assign our textures. Now, if we assign textures that are in the uh, cry engine game folder, For the time, the uh, the diffuse and the specular, okay, diffuse color and specular color, all right. As long as those are checked, when you add in your different maps, it will export them in the material, uh, as I'm going to show you here. I haven't uh, figured out what's going on with the bump map. I don't know what to name it in the Collada file that gets exported. Um, sorry, but once I find that out, I'll release an update to this one. Now, the B meshes version, uh, I'm going to keep everything the same. Uh, I'm going to try, uh, the menu's not going to change uh, aside from what gets added for the uh, skeletal animation. But the rest of it, it's going to stay the same. Okay, all right, we've got our texture set up, our materials set up. We don't have a UV map, but I just want to show you this, what happens. All right, we're going to go to export to game. We're already in our folder there. We're going to choose run resource compiler and do materials. And what we want to do is we want to toggle system console so we can see what's going on just in case there's an issue. This will let you know what's going on. And uh, I'll try to explain what happens with each uh, error as we go along, but when we, uh, I'll get to that when we get to that. All right, we'll go ahead and click on export to game. And as you can see, it already did it. Uh, I've got this set up to where at the top here, it'll tell you how much, how long it takes to do each thing. The vertex locations, the location in 3D space for each little point here, gives you a time for that. The normals, which is uh, the normal direction for each face or each vertex, depending on whether or not you got it smooth or flat. And uh, it tells you right here, you forgot to do UV mapping. Let me add one for you. And as you can see right here, it did add a UV map. Don't abuse this. You, of course, want to UV map your model. This is not going to magically just make it perfect. It's just something to throw it in there so the exporter doesn't uh, crash on you and you'll be looking at an error code that is alien. And then uh, it tells you how long it took for the UVs. 
and then poly list to, tells you how long it took to do that. And then of course you have the output from the resource compiler so if there's any errors you'll get that. Alright now, and silly me I should have had that loaded up already but that's okay. It shouldn't take that long. Well, I say it shouldn't. Anyway, while well, that's loading up, what else, what else, what else? Uh, I don't want to go, go too far away from the basic export. Um, of course, while you're editing, you know, you can check it out and make sure everything looks right. Okay. Let's load it up. Let's go ahead and open our level here. Shouldn't take too long. I don't have anything but a cube in there. Alright, we've got our texture loaded up. Dun -dun -dun -dun. Loading objects. Only one object. There we go. Alright. Now, as you can see, that's what my brick texture looks like. But I'm going to come on over here. Go to brush. Go to objects. There's your blender folder. There's your basic export. And as you can see, voila. Our texture, the diffuse and specular anyway has been loaded on the model. Now, like I was saying, you know, you're going to have to uh, set up your normal map and your parallax occlusion, etc., etc., but at least, you know, it's already there so you can so you can get going on it. But don't forget to check this out. I mean, you're going to have to tweak your materials anyway to make them look the way you want them to look. Uh, I've just saved a couple uh, steps there. Um, I wish I could do better, but that's as good as I can do at the moment. But anyway, that's a basic export uh, of a cube, whatever. Uh, you don't have to triangulate it on export. Uh, you don't have to do anything special other than that. And uh, the next tutorial is going to be about the physics proxy, <clears throat> which is uh, uh, the next part in the documentation here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just go down through these one at a time. And we're going to do everything that we can in Blender on up to... Uh, the weapons part here, because the weapons do require uh, uh, the bone export or skeletal export. Anyway, that's the first tutorial. Sorry it took so long, but next ones will go a little quicker. Thank you, and uh, have fun.